cedar tree, another tree that we're all very familiar with and see in country homes and in churchyards and if we're lucky in our gardens. It's known of the tree of God, purification, protection, and it's used in so many different ways. Let's have a look at this wonderful tree, shall we? The cedars of Lebanon, known as the cedar of the gods. The bulk of the cedar trees are located on the Ars Mountains in Lebanon. Throughout history, there has been major destruction of these wonderful trees. In 1876, Queen Victoria funded a fence to be put around these trees and protect them. Despite her efforts, during World War I, British soldiers significantly cut down the tree population by exploiting it for the railroads. The oldest story of the Cedars of Lebanon predates the Bible by a thousand years. It's the famous story of Gilgamesh. It's all about gods and demigods like Humbaba, and there's beautiful statues of both. On the 6th of August, Christians celebrate the feast day of Christ's transfiguration, and the Cedars of Lebanon have always been the place to celebrate this special occasion. UNESCO named the forest one of the World Heritage Sites now, and it's protected and cherished. The cedar tree is often mentioned in the Psalms in the Bible and has lots of interpretations as well. Cedar is very healing. The first French explorers had scurvy very bad and the local native people gave them cedar tea to drink and stop them from dying from scurvy because it was full of vitamin C. In 1535, the French explorer Jacques Cartier was on his expedition along the St. Lawrence River in America when they came down with scurvy and the native Indians helped them to recover. Capability Brown used the cedar in his planting schemes around the country in many stately homes. Cedars were planted in grounds of almost all stately homes and mansions from about 1740s. It is not commonly planted today. It was introduced here approximately 400 years ago. The oldest was one that Dr. Edward Pocock planted in his rectory garden in about 1646. Wildlife loved the cedar tree and at this beautiful stately home, the peacocks here go into the branches for resting and to sleep and feel comfortable and secure. These trees make wonderful nest sites as well. Look behind me at the beautiful bird. There's a lot here by this wonderful cedar tree and they often will come to the tree and you'll see these beautiful birds nesting, resting in the trees. It's wonderful isn't it? How magical is that to be filming and the next minute the bird just comes along. Absolutely magical. These peacocks can catch you unawares. You can look up into the trees and you wonder what that strange shape is on that branch. And here we see this beautiful peacock having a lovely little rest in a cedar tree. The cedar tree is sacred to the Native Americans. The Cherokee medicine men would carry cedar in their little pouches, their medicine pouches, and are often worn around their necks. All kinds of tribes of Native Americans would use the cedar for healing and for lots of different rituals. The Native Americans think of the cedar tree as very sacred. The Cherokee know it as Asinaluga, 
for prayers, healing and protection. In their sweat lodges, the cedar is used to bless the ceremony. Prayers rise from the cedar smoke and you are connected to the Creator. Cedar smoke will enable you to create a bridge between heaven and earth for you to be at one with your God. These medicine bags are very important to the Native Americans. Throughout the ages they have been used and are still used today in many ceremonies and the medicine men still carry them around with them in these bags, often with cedar in them. Cedar trees we know are used for ointments, cough medicine, but did you know cedar was used by the ancient Egyptians to mummify the bodies, the mummification. It's also used as a repellent for spiders, insects, bugs, and the mothballs that you put in your drawers and closets is cedar oil. Cedar oil is used for so many things, even to repel snakes. Cedar trees are members of the genus Cedrus, which is part of the pine family. There are four cedar species. The trees are dioecious, which means that they have both male and female flowers, which are the cones like structures that occur on the same tree. The life cycle starts with these cones. The Greek historians Diodorus and Strabo both mention the Celtic warriors using cedar oil to preserve the heads of their enemies taken in battle as trophies. A cachet of human bones were found in France that proves the historical accounts were true. The Celts did indeed decapitate their enemy and embalm their heads in cedar oil. Then they kept them for trophies to show everybody. Cedar trees are part of the genus Cedrus, which is part of the pine family. There are four true cedars. There is the Atlas cedar, the Cypress cedar, the Deodar cedar, and of course, the Lebanon cedar. When did these beautiful cedars start to come into this country. The atlas was first described by Giuseppe Manetti and the third Earl Summers of East North Castle introduced them in around about the 1840s. They can still be seen today and are wonderful specimens. The Cyprus was here because the Victorian explorer Sir Samuel Baker discovered them. Seeds were then planted at Kew in 1881. The Deodar, the Honourable Leslie Melville, introduced them into the Scottish estates approximately in 1831. They were then planted in the woodlands and forest, but didn't do very well, and a lot of them died. But during the Victorian era, they started to flourish again. Cedar can be affected by the Soracos suji fungi. It can also be prone to honey fungus and aphid attack. Trees can grow up to 35 meters in height. Like yews, cedar trees are often found in churchyards. Their beautiful evergreen foliage, the architectural shape, just adds to the landscape. Tawny owls, a variety of birds, bats and mammals, all love the cedar tree in the graveyard for nesting, resting, food and safety. The beautiful, peaceful surroundings of the graveyards, so lovely, so quiet and so restful. Zeus's throne, made of cedar wood at Olympia, must have been truly magnificent. Zeus sat on a painted cedar wood throne, ornamented with ebony, ivory, gold 
and precious stones. It is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The statue was lost and destroyed during the 5th century AD. Details of its form are known only from ancient Greek descriptions and representation on coins. This is a statue of Phidias, the sculptor, who in 435 BC created the wonderful statue of Zeus sitting on his cedarwood throne at the sanctuary of Olympia in the temple dedicated to Zeus. Cedar trees are so wonderful. The history of them and the amount of things that these wonderful trees are used for. I hope you've enjoyed this little journey of the cedar tree.